In this video, we are going to demonstrate Creaform's MaxShot photogrammetry system. Now, what is photogrammetry? Well, it has a few different uses, uh, but basically it is a camera system where you take uh, photos from multiple angles, and it's then either used to use software to stitch together and build a 3D model, or how it's going to be used in this example is to increase the accuracy over distance on larger parts. The Creaform MaxShot system can be used as a standalone measurement system or it can be integrated in with some of Creaform's other products. In this demonstration we are going to show it being used with the MetraScan system and the HandyProbe system. So for this demonstration we're going to show how the system can be used with a fairly large object in this case a car frame where we're going to scan it and we're going to do some probing on some key features. So a couple things you'll notice right away on here is the what we call dynamic referencing targets. These are the 12 millimeter targets used with the MetraScan and probing system and they allow us to not only move the car frame around but we can also move the C-Track system. Now we have other demos that show uh, the MetraScan and Handy probe system and go into more detail. The next thing you'll notice are what we call coded targets and basically those are the square targets and each one is unique so that the max shot system as it takes the photographs uh, those uh, unique coded targets will be in the uh, uh, in the uh, images and the software will recognize those and use them to stitch everything together. And then finally, the third thing we have here is scale bars and an orientation bar. And those are critical for the accuracy uh, of the MaxShot system. So by having these uh, uh, scale bars with a known uh, distance between them, between the points on each end, um, allows the system to be very accurate. So now the next step is to use the MaxShot system to take the actual photographs. You're basically walking around the object and making sure you're getting the, the targets uh, in the uh, field of view of the camera. The camera system is very interactive. It'll light up green uh, when it's a good photograph and it'll light up red uh, when it's not, meaning you don't have the targets uh, in the view. So you walk around the entire part taking these series of photographs. Uh, it's very fast, only takes a few minutes to collect all the different photographs. The other nice thing is the software is also very interactive. So as you see here, as we're building this target map file, uh, it's also uh, letting us know uh, when we have a good field of view. And as we acquire the targets, you see the coded targets have numbers. You can see the scale bars. Uh, it's very easy to move around. And the system will tell you when you have enough photographs to complete the uh, photogrammetry. The other thing you can do is uh, zoom in and zoom out and look at everything. You can also uh, scroll through all the different individual pictures uh, that you had created. And then you can actually look at the chart of targets to make sure you've got the good targets you need. So once the software is done optimizing all the targets, you can now remove the scale bars and the coded targets and then you just leave the 12 millimeter targets on the part and those are essentially your dynamic referencing targets like you normally use with the MetraScan system but now they've been optimized to increase their accuracy and uh, at the end here we'll actually show the actual differences or the increase you can get in the accuracy over a large part like this. But now we're ready to actually start scanning with the MetraScan system. Um, we can move our C-Track around um, as we scan this as need be to keep it into the view. Um, but it's just kind of like digital spray painting. And again, we have videos that go into a lot more detail on the MetraScan system. But essentially we are 3D scanning the part so we can pick up the 3D shape all the way around the part. So after about an hour of scanning you can see here the 3D scan data. So we have a very high fidelity model of the entire car frame. Now the only challenge with 3D scanning a part like this is it's very thin walled and when you have a thin walled part it's hard to pick up the holes and this is there's a lot of holes on this part. Basically there's no sidewall because the metal is so thin it makes it very difficult. So whether you're doing reverse engineering or inspection, 
3D scanning uh, thin metal like this with holes is a real challenge. So this is where probing comes into play. Probing is very good for primitive features like holes, uh, planes, and other geometry. Um, it's basically a portable CMM with a probe tip, and you can use different extensions and tip sizes. So as you see here, we're probing around the hole to first identify a plane, and then we'll go back and touch that probe tip right on the edge of that hole. And if we take at least three points, we can then identify the size and the center location of that hole. So it's a great way to very accurately um, probe geometry, again, for reverse engineering or inspection. And the Handy Probe is battery operated. It's very easy to use. And as long as it can see that C-Track camera system, you can probe. So you can work in that very large volume. And again, by using the Max Shot, we've increased the accuracy over this distance um, so that we can get very accurate measurements. And there's dozens of holes on this part that we need to collect. So we've already done the scanning, and now we just go back and probe all of our hole locations and any other geometry that would make sense to use with the probe. So it's very fast, and it's very easy to use. Now once the uh, probing is all done, you'll notice here it aligns perfectly with, with the 3D scan data uh, because, again, we're using that same dynamic referencing system. So in this case, we output the holes as cylinders, and you can see they line up uh, with the uh, geometry. But this could have been fed into an inspection report, or in this case where we're doing reverse engineering, um, we've got a very accurate CAD representation of the location and size of those holes, which we will use for our downstream applications. So as we discussed, one of the main reasons why you would use the MacShot system is to increase your accuracy over distance. So if you take a look at uh, this chart here for the MetraScan system, now there's a few different models here. Um, and we're not going to go into all the detail here. But if you look at the, the MetraScan 750 Elite, you can um, set up the C-Track to either look at a 9.1 meter volume or a 16.6 .6 meter volume. And that's basically how big of an area the C-Track can see while you're scanning. So for example, in that 16 meter volume, um, you'll have an accuracy of 78 microns or about three thousandths of an inch. So over the distance of that car frame, um, everything should be within about three thousandths of an inch. And the key thing here is that is a volumetric accuracy. So that's uh, measuring points anywhere in that volume. Now, if you use the max shot system ahead of time with those scale bars and those coded targets, our um, accuracy increases down to 44 microns or about two thousandths of an inch. And then from there, what we call the stacking error um, increases by 25 microns over a meter. So basically a thousandths of an inch about every uh, three feet. So as you uh, were to, if you were to, you know, scan things bigger than that 16 meter volume, that's kind of the stacking error or how much the error would increase over distance. So you could scan things at, you know, 20 foot in size and still be within, you know, three, four thousandths of an inch. So very good accuracy on, you know, very large parts. Um, and that dynamic referencing, we didn't really go into that in this video, actually allows you to work out an environment where things are moving around and still keeping that accuracy. So that's very unique. So now let's take a look at the Handy Probe. So again, with the same nine meter or 16 meter volume, we've got a few different um, accuracy statements here. So for single point repeatability, um, you can see we're within about 58 microns or about a couple thousandths of an inch. And that's a simpler measurement back and forth uh, versus the volumetric, which is in true 3D space throughout that entire volume. So for the volumetric accuracy, um, it's basically the same as the MetraScan, about 78 microns. But again, if you add the max shot, that drops down to that 44, mi uh, 44 microns. Um, and then the stacking error of about 25 microns per meter. 
So same thing, when you start probing large things, you want to try to hold a tighter accuracy, especially when you get a, a larger than that 16 meter volume, that, that's really going to help with that accuracy. So again, the whole point of the max shot is to get better accuracy and then control it um, on larger parts as you go. So uh, it can be a real benefit when you're trying to hold a tight accuracy. So to wrap up this video, the max shot system is very easy to use. It only takes a few minutes to set out scale bars, coded targets, uh, and take all those pictures and then process it through the software. Uh, and then you can use it with the MetraScan system and the Handy Probe system. It can also be used with the Handy Scan, which we really didn't cover in this video, but can be used with these products. And the whole idea of using the Max Shot is to increase your accuracy on large items. Um, over distance. So when accuracy is critical um, or you need to take it to the highest level, that's where you would add the max shot system to any 3D scanning or probing that you need to do for both reverse engineering and inspection.